Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to hit all notifications to be notified the second we publish our content so you don't miss out on anything. Let me get into this uh, this topic here. Now, as you guys know, today's going to be a very be going to be a very big day in the NBA. The Lakers are going to be playing game four at home to, uh, against the Denver Nuggets, who they're currently down 0-3. Two, and it's a very pivotal, pivotal game. But prior to this game, people were reacting to what took place in game three. And funny enough, I'm going to mention something. Yesterday, there was a segment on Undisputed featuring uh, uh, um, um, Skip Bayless, Keyshawn Johnson, and Paul Pierce. And I was listening to Keyshawn Johnson, and Keyshawn Johnson said something pretty, pretty interesting. He said that if the Lakers lose this series, he said they need to blow the whole thing up. Keyshawn is a lifelong Lakers fan. Keyshawn Johnson really seemed frustrated and he seemed like he is through with this current iteration of this roster. He's like, I've seen enough and I want a new batch of players. And I think that there are a lot of people out there that feel like, listen, this 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 compilation of players, this amalgamation of talent is not going to be good enough to win a championship or at least come out of the Western Conference when you have teams like the the, the, the Timber, Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets sitting there uh, he, the, uh, or in the Oklahoma City Thunder sitting there. And, of course, the Dallas Mavericks, right? So right before we started shooting, I came across a clip on Stephen A. Smith's show, a channel, the Stephen A. Smith show, where he was essentially talking about this LeBron thing. And by the way, he did suggest that the Lakers consider trading LeBron. But he, then he said something else interesting. He said, if LeBron were to get swept again, he said that the GOAT debate will officially be over. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Stephen A. Smith had to say here. I want you guys to listen to it in its, in its entirety. And then want to come back and react to this commentary. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say here. The Denver Nuggets officially own the Los Angeles Lakers. For all we know, they got stock invested in the franchise. And they reaping the benefits from it. That, I mean, that's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. D'Angelo Russell, who averaged six points on 32% shooting and 13% shooting from three-point range in last year's four-game sweep in the Western Conference Finals, this brother went scoreless in Game 3. Scoreless. Hit seven threes in Game 2. Was very anemic in Game 1. So once again, for the most part, he's a virtual no-show. And right now, to me, there's a couple of things that need to be entertained. Nobody else is saying it, so I'm going to say it. Number one. There's nothing to talk about with the GOAT conversation if LeBron James ends up getting swept. I will remind you that Michael Jordan has been swept in the postseason before. Both times, around the mid-80s, 84, 85, 85, 86, he got swept by the Boston Celtics. Those were three-game series back then. Michael Jordan never got swept in a best of seven, meaning a best four out of seven game series. That never happened to Michael Jordan. That's number one. Number two, okay, Yet another argument in favor of Michael Jordan's GOAT status, being that he's never been swept, he's never been owned by a particular team, even though Boston in the early part of his career won about 13 straight against him himself. Here's the thing that we have to pay attention to. Is it time for the Los Angeles Lakers to consider the unthinkable? See what you can entertain for the services of LeBron James and see if you can convince him to go elsewhere because you ain't going to win no title with LeBron James, not with Minnesota want to come up, not with Oklahoma City, not with Dallas and the Clippers, not with the Denver Nuggets being there. You ain't going to win. I will remind you that the same Lakers crew lost all four times to the Sacramento Kings this year during the regular season. I will remind you that Zion, with that last game in the play-in tournament against the Lakers, put everybody on notice. He ain't scared. So you heard what he had to say. Listen, I had a position yesterday that... Um some find some may find controversial uh but i 100 percent mean it and i'm dead serious about it i am dead serious uh about it and i want to share with you guys uh here this is what i this is what i said i said that if lebron gets swept again he will be out of my top five forever as it currently stands, my top five are the following. Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Magic Johnson. 
Then, of course, you have Shaq, you have Tim Duncan, and the rest. I said, however, if he were to get swept in consecutive years while having an all first, excuse me, a top 75 teammate on his roster, he will be out of my top five forever. Some people said, oh, you're being unfair. He's 39. I said, but the same people saying that I'm being unfair that he's 39 are the same people that would that would say LeBron James should be the GOAT if he were to win this championship at 39. They want his age to only work in his benefit. We've been told by people like Nick Wright, by people like Shannon Sharp, by people like Kendrick Perkins and so many others that LeBron is an all NBA player. He's one of the top 10 players in the world. So I'm grading him on that, on that scale. He is one of the top 10 players in the world. He is at a level right now at his age that Michael Jordan could never think of it as, 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 as at his age. We're going to use what you guys have been saying. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to speak to your standard that you've set. If he's as good as as you guys say he is. If LeBron gets swept in consecutive series with a top 75 teammate, back-to-back, -back, you're out of my top five forever. And I'll tell you why. Because no other player in my top five would have ever done such. Michael Jordan never got swept two, in two consecutive years while playing with a top 75. Hell, while playing with an all-star. That never happened to Kobe. That never happened to Kareem. That never uh, that would happen to, 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 to uh, LeBron. And I, that, that never happened to Magic Johnson. That never happened to Tim Duncan. So why will LeBron still be in my top five? What I'm trying to do here, and I think the reason some people have an issue with me, and Gilbert Arena said it just yesterday when I was talking to him. He said, you're always bashing LeBron. I said, I'm holding him accountable. I asked him, when was the last time you held LeBron accountable? When? When? And I told him, I said, that's the problem. If there were more people in, with, that have big voices, if they were doing that and creating a balance, then there would be no need for people like me to say anything because it's a balance. But as, as it currently exists, there is no balance. All we see is people running up and down, twerking it up all over the place, knocking over each other's drinks, slapping each other with honey all day long on ESPN and FS1 and all of these networks with, Nick, with the Nick Wrights of the world and all of them. And nobody wants to keep it real. So I'm going to say my piece like many others are saying in the independent space. I'm not the only one. I'm just speaking for myself right now. If, I, uh, excuse me, their issue is that I'm holding him accountable for his losing. Losing must count against you. It must. Because if we hold losing against you, that means we can value winning more. We can value it more. And I'm also providing context to what's happening. Do you guys, first of all, I don't think this, this the GOAT debate was ever even a thing. I think the closest thing to Michael Jordan ever was Kobe Bryant. I think you have those two, then you have everybody else. I got Kareem at number two out of respect. In terms of ball players, I got Kobe and MJ at the top. And then you got everybody else as ball players. And all the NBA players know, uh, know it. I'm not talking about these new dudes. All the NBA players know what it is. All of them. Including LeBron, his damn self, when he was when Kobe was playing. So those are, those are my two guys right there, Kobe and 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 and, uh, and and Michael Jordan. But are you guys aware that Michael Jordan has only lost one playoff series in his NBA career when he had at least one All Star? Are you guys aware of that? Tell me, y'all, like that's impossible. No, it's not impossible. One, one, just one. During his six-year P, I I mean, that six-year window, the eight-year window, he had the three P. He won three in a row. That year, I think in 1990, 1991, that was the year Scottie Pippen became an all-star. They won the next three championships. The year before Scottie Pippen was, years before he was not an all-star caliber player. Go look at his numbers. He became an all-star. Jordan wins three finals. Then he steps away from the game. He comes back. He loses in round one. That's the first loss with an all-star. Then he comes back and wins another three. So in Jordan's career, in that eight-year window, he lost one time when he had an All-Star and he didn't play the other year. One playoff series. One playoff series. Kobe can't say that. LeBron damn sure can't say that. But if you get swept two years in a row with the top 75 guy, yesterday we were arguing, uh, I forgot, the uh, Dubs, Chan, Dubs World Channel, and one guy said, but Anthony Davis is not top 75. I'm like, oh my God. 
Oh my God! Now Anthony Davis ain't tough. Now they're trying to minimize how good Anthony Davis is. You named a player that Michael Jordan was playing with with the Wizards. They could get you thirty and fifteen every single night in the playoffs. You named the player because that's who LeBron is playing with. Anthony Davis is averaging thirty and like thirteen right now. Thirty and thirteen right now. MJ was not playing with no player like that. Even when Kobe won them three championships, Paul Gasol was not as talented as, as Anthony Davis. So if LeBron loses tonight and gets swept, he's out of my top five forever. I, I will have, these are the players I'll have ahead of him in no particular order. Jordan, Kareem, Kobe, Magic Johnson, Shaq, Tim Duncan. So he'd probably be number seven for me. And that's where he'll be at. He ain't coming back in my top five. It's over. These are my thoughts.